Hey guys, I'm Aaron. This is Help Me DIY. Thanks for watching. Today I'm diagnosing a mirror that I installed because I had a broken mirror on my E46. And when I put the new one in, the motor didn't seem to work. So this video, I think it's some YouTube firsts about disassembling a mirror and getting down to the motor and testing it out. If you haven't been on this channel before, this car is the one that I am uh, fixing up and we are going to give it away for free. So there's a link in the description that you can actually register to win, no cost to register. And this is the mirror. So I learned a lot about mirrors. Turns out I'm gonna give you the quick version of what happened. I did not have it plugged in all the way. So that's the spoiler alert. But if you are having some problems with your mirror, uh, I'm gonna show you all of the insides of them and even how to test the motor with some probes. <laughs> Shop dog down here is guarding the new mirror that I just got for the E46 and I went to install it for my first project on fixing up this car and found out that it actually has a motor that doesn't work. So here is the old one that I'm replacing. It is broken and uh, I found some YouTube videos that show you you can just pry this off. So since I didn't worry about breaking this one, I literally just pushed it out of the way, grabbed it, pulled it, and popped it off with my hand. There's four little clips here that clip into here around the ring on the motor. So my, my attempt is I'm going to try to take this motor and move it over to the uh, new mirror that I got because the motor in that one does not work. And when you get the glass off, there's gonna be these two little contacts right here. You literally just pull them off and uh, this is for the heated element that's in there. So I'm not even sure if this is gonna work or not, but if you're seeing this video, it probably did, or at least uh, I'll show you some interesting parts inside of this thing. So it looks like there are uh, five Phillips screws that I need to remove, and it looks like that's how you remove this piece here that is nice and dull and crappy. A lot of people wanna just replace that part anyway, so. Apparently all you have to do is pop the glass out and take these out. Okay, four of the screws removed. Number five, super rusty, can't get that thing out. Uh, this back cover, if you've never taken one off, will have uh, these little plastic clips that are probably gonna be broken that snap into here, here, uh, here, and here, four places. So it just kind of uh, attaches like this and then you pull it off like that. I'm assuming they give you some access on this side so you can uh, pull the little tabs to release them through here. But uh, most of mine were broken. So since this is the old mirror and I don't care about this and I can't get that screw off, uh, I guess I could try to cut the screw or I'm just gonna pry this thing off. There we go. We got around that screw. Now, uh, let's figure out how to remove this motor. Well, now that I'm thinking about it, uh, I'm gonna not remove this whole assembly because I can't, I don't think, even if uh, this piece appears to be glued on maybe or somehow attached. But even if I got that out, this cable uh, runs all the way through here. And unless I removed all of the terminals and repinned it, I couldn't get this Part out. So I think I'm just going to unscrew these Phillips screws and try to get to the actual motors themselves. <laughs> oh, ha. Okay, so those three go into posts on the back of this. So that's how this thing comes out. So I don't know if you can see, but it looks like there's a little arrow engraved in this piece right here. And it looks like it's connected at the top and bottom. 
It almost looks like a little toilet paper holder. So I'm wondering if I can move it in the direction of the arrow. I don't want to break anything. Oh, actually, it feels like it's moving back this way when I pull from the top. Actually, felt like it moved and stuck in position here a little. out there. Not too confident about that. There's some little black tab looking piece under here as well. It feels like it's still being held in place here. Yeah, I don't like this too much. got it off. So it looks like uh, these two pieces uh, I pulled apart enough finally to come off of this thing right here. Let me zoom in. So I think that was the key to get this thing off. Now, there was another type of these that rotated. Okay, so now that allows this piece to rotate a little. So you can see these little tabs right here are lining up and making contact with the gears of the motors. So these are the two motors. Separating. Yeah. All right, so this little gaskety thing. So let's see what's going on if we remove that. So it's coming apart from the bottom and the top. It looks like the bottom just has the circuit board in there. I don't think I want to take that apart. Here's where all of our wires are coming in to the bottom. So this has two little tabs that you can pull down. Let's try to figure out how to release the motor. So the ring is loose except for the two connections right here. I'm trying to figure out how to disconnect those. Uh -huh. Okay, hopefully they're just snapped in here because I pried that one out. Yeah, 
that one. This one looks like it's just kind of a ball joint. It goes into here. Okay, popped that one out. All right, now the ring just lifts right off. And okay, pretty sure I pulled this one up too high when it got disconnected. I guess that's what the motor does. It uh, just raises this up and down. All right, almost there. So with the back off, you can definitely see all of the circuit board and the wires down at the bottom connecting to these contacts. So if I could remove just this whole piece and leave the circuit board, then I could transfer that to the other mirror and that's exactly what I would want to do. However, I don't see how uh, that could come apart. So pulling this little thing back has to do something. It's gotta be releasing something or doing something. <sighs> just stuck trying to figure out how to get the motors out. All right, I'm gonna to try to get into the wiring of this connector here. So you can see right here where this arrow is, there's like a little uh, tab that's sticking up. So I just stuck a flathead screwdriver in there to push it in to release it. So right in there, I just push that in and then this piece will lift up. And then you have all of the wires connected to your terminals here. Now I can actually get to the pins to do some testing. And theoretically, now I'm at the point where I could remove this whole piece at once if I wanted by just uh, unhooking the wires from here and pulling them out of this, but getting them in seems like it would be super hard. All right, I did some random experimentation. One of these sides has five pins and one has four. So the side that has four pins, I actually discovered uh, that this top pin right here, combined with pins uh, three and four down here, actually make the motors go. So if I use pin one and pin three, it activates one of the motors, and if I use pin one and pin four, it activates the other motor. So applying uh, negative here and positive here makes one of the motors go in one direction. And if I switch the polarity and do negative here and positive here, that same motor will go in the other direction. So let me demo that for you real quick. And just to give you an idea of my setup, uh, I'm using this power probe that's super cool. I'll put a link to it right here and in the description. If you wanna buy one, I just have a battery that I connect the uh, negative and positive terminals to here. And you can hear the power probe turn on. I always press this button once to turn off the uh, little noise because it's annoying sometimes. So I take the negative and I just have this thing hooked up to a uh, small bare wire here so I can apply it directly to those contacts and on the other end of the power probe it comes with this thing so I can make contact to the pins all right I got it set up so hopefully you can see the motors at the same time and uh, this white thing here and this white thing here are the things that go up and down when the motor runs so I've got this thing going and I apply the negative here and with the power probe I can apply positive to this one on the bottom and you can see that moving up now if I switch the polarity and put the negative here and the positive here you can see it move back down. So same thing with the motor number two, moving up that way. And if I switch them, oops, and I touch the right one, it moves down. So you can test your motors this way. Now I'm gonna switch over to the new mirror that I purchased where the motor did not work when I plugged it into the car. So here is the little connector. I'm gonna try to pop 
crap out. This bit. I just broke that outer tab a little bit. Uh, okay, yeah, so obviously the easier way is to uh, lift it out from the inside like this, and then I can just pull it straight out. So you guys do that. All right, now we'll try our little experiment again by putting negative here, and let me apply positive over here. I hear it. Let me switch them. Hmm, all right, so it's actually working. Let me try the second one. Aha. Uh -huh. So, they actually are both working, so I don't know why it wasn't working when I had it plugged in. So I might have to try this again. Maybe it was just my bad. Maybe it didn't have a good connection somehow. Well, in any case, we learned a whole lot about these E46 mirrors. So I'm just going to reapply these two wires here that do our heated assembly. this back up in the middle and it snaps right back in. I also learned that this is easy to take off in case you uh, break this plastic piece and you could uh, just replace one of these. While I have this out, I just inspected uh, the holes and pins just to make sure it wasn't clogged or preventing contact or something. And then uh, the same with this piece. Uh, it looks fine. I don't see any reason why it wouldn't be working. So just to reassemble this, it snaps back in, and let's go install it again and test it. Oh my god, always something. Trying to reassemble that. The little piece that went right here to hold that clip on, on both sides at the same time, popped off. So that thing broke, so uh, I guess I'll try to super glue that back on and find the other one. Wait, work smarter, not harder. This is the one from my other mirror that I'm replacing, and that's what they look like. So I popped one side off, let me pop the other one off, and I'll reuse this piece. All right, the other side just popped right off. I'm trying to do it gently because I don't want to break this. Uh, okay, yeah, so once it's lifted up there, I can remove it. Now, hopefully, I can get the other piece back on here wires back out. Wires back into this one. Let's see, I think it goes on this way. Please don't break, please don't break, please don't break. Ah, okay. Snapped in place. Oh gosh. Let's try this again. I don't like the way that feels. It feels like it's applying too much pressure when I try to close it, like it's not fitting in right. <laughs> okay, snapped back in there. I right, grab the door card. Uh, just need to reconnect this one back to the switch and test it. All right, that is reconnected, so let's try it out. All right, it is not doing anything still. When I change the left mirror, the left mirror works. I 
Turn it back over here. It does not work. And I know that it used to work with the first one, so I am stumped. Hmm. One thing I just noticed with these two switches, even though it seemed to lock in, this first switch seems to be a lot lower. Let me show you what I'm talking about. See that locking mechanism is flush with this piece and that one is still too low. So I wonder if this is just not engaged all the way. Let me try to reseat this. Ugh. In the process of trying to push it in further, these broke off on this one too. So super fragile, but I did notice that I'm able to push it up a lot harder and click it in and now this post here is flush with this so even though i can't lock it with this thing it is in there firmly and clicked in so i bet it's gonna work now so let's see oh yeah imagine that when you plug it in it works so I hope you guys learned something. I learned a lot during this process. If you found this video helpful at all, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel for some more E46 content. It'll be coming in the near future. And another shout out to Rio Toro for sponsoring this whole project. And uh, don't forget to sign up for their giveaway. There is a link in the description. So thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next week.